Hey guys, Logan here, and I just got sent a free desktop CNC milling machine by these guys, and I'm not one to turn down free stuff, so let's uh, go see what we can make. Now this is the only desktop I actually have in the workshop. It's pretty darn flimsy, and that's not going to do. That's a bit more like it. So I have everything set up, and if you're anything like me, uh, I have no interest whatsoever in doing the practice examples. I am terrible at following instructions, and I just want to get on to making things for my own projects. So the first thing I'm going to have a go at making is a gear position sensor cap to go on the crankcases. So first up, I spent about 20 minutes in Fusion 360 and whipped up this wee design here. And that was the easy part done. The next part took me about four hours. I spent a whole bunch of time watching tutorials and videos on how to do the cam software on Fusion 360, and as well as learning how the Makara controller works, which is what uh, the computer uses to talk to the milling machine. Now the CNC came with a pretty impressive array of end mills. I think I counted 42 with the clamp down kit and also came with a collet for quarter inch end mills. So I'm looking forward to getting some bigger, beefier end mills as well. But for the most of the operations, I'm gonna be using this uh, eighth inch single flute end mill for aluminum. And for the detail parts, I'll be using a one mil end mill. And without further ado, let's cut some aluminum. There's nothing there, genius. Starting off with a couple processes on the back and then flipping it over and doing the detailed work on the front. So there's process number two. This is the front side. Now you can see there's a circle here. I did uh, mess that up slightly. For some reason it tried to do process one again, but I think that was my fault. Um, but yeah, very happy with that. This started to look pretty bloody cool. Um, so I just got one more process to do on this side and then hopefully part it out. And hopefully top and bottom are aligned where they should be, but yeah, we'll see. All right, so that's finally done, and it should be paper thin. There we go. Couple little pieces of the design that need to be fixed, and yeah, I made that small mistake there, but I'm pretty impressed with that, to be honest. My first attempt at doing any sort of CAD, this lip here is way too thick. I can make that lighter, and then, yeah, not mess up this piece here with that random circle. I may even make the anvil hollow, but yeah, it's pretty light, it's pretty cool, see if it fits. So this is the hole in the cases that our we uh, cover is designed to go over. Now, I've just realised <laughs> I've messed up the orientation of the logo, that's not even remotely level. And so this is the o-ring which should fit over there like that. And that lips just enough to hold it in place. And then uh, I suppose we're putting it like that, heading downhill. Not too bad for a first attempt, the, the cosmetic blemish on the front, which was my mistake, and then also on the back there's two issues, uh, this ring is not concentric to the outside, it's off centre, which is a bit of an issue, and then the other one is the uh, ring is not actually the correct diameter either, it's taken into account a fillet, it's made it wider on the outside and inside diameter, so it's not really usable this part unfortunately, so I'm going to have a go at making something a bit more complicated now that I've sort of cut my teeth on this, so let's get to it. And so what I'm going to be making is an oil junction which bolts onto the crankcase which splits my oil line into two. So there'll be one line to the cooler, one line to the oil pressure relief valve. I'm going to do a quick test fit with a 3D printer because it's an awful lot of energy to put into something that doesn't fit. So mocking that up with the 3D printer has told me that I can actually make it a little bit shorter as well because I do have plenty of clearance. So yeah, let's go make it with our desktop CNC. So just quickly prepping the stock for the CNC. And once I had that sorted, I machined the top. Now the video for that malfunctions. So here's a picture of it. And then I moved on to the side, which I had to bore those two holes and then rotate it 90 bore another hole as deep as I could which I did have to finish up on the big mill because I couldn't get a bit to go deep enough and then it was upside down for the remainder of the machining. 
Yeah. One thing that's a little bit weird is you definitely can't go off uh, the time estimate on the controller software because uh, Fusion said this will be about two hours and yeah, this is saying it's gonna be like way longer than that. And it does seem to fluctuate a lot, which is a little bit fishy. And there we are. I have this off the mill and all cleaned up and I have a part that is not usable. <laughs> which kind of sucks, but the one mistake is those two oil gallery holes are not centered and it is pretty thin on this side. So I'm not willing to risk that, especially on a pressurized oil fitting. So I'll have to make another one of these when I have a spare minute, but this took me a fair bit of time, especially with prepping all the stock and everything. And there was about four or five different operations. So I'm gonna have one more go at trying to make one of these uh, plates, which can go on the engine and make no mistakes. Every 10 minutes or so, I would use the inbuilt air nozzle to clear the chips away. And other than that, I just left it to its own devices, which I must say was pretty darn weird. And there we are, I have a usable part with no mistakes, no flaws in it, so I'm very impressed and very happy uh, with the final result. And it only took me maybe two hours to do the whole redesigning, machining, and have the part ready to go. As for the Kavara Air itself, I'm pretty darn impressed with what it can do. It's taken everything I've thrown at it, and as far as the build quality, the whole mill itself is actually pretty darn rigid. I was actually quite surprised. You know, with how light it is, it's obviously got a pretty solid design, especially for its wide range of capabilities, which is targeted at the hobbyist market. For example, if you wanna go buy a full-size CNC mill, even an entry one is probably gonna set you back at least three times the price. Now it does have its limitations, although I have seen the makers of the Kavara Air doing some machining of titanium on the mill, which I definitely want to have a go at because I definitely want to see if it can do, you know, tougher materials, does, does steel, does titanium, stuff like that. So I have to buy some bits which are actually designed for that material. Now the only two things I didn't like was the protective cover which folds up out of the way, makes it a hell of a lot taller, and less compact. So I made mine removable, fix that problem. And the other one is the software for the controller is a little bit quirky. Sometimes it does unexpected things. Um, and so once you sort of figure out how to use it properly and what not to do, uh, it generally works pretty good. Now, as far as going and buying one of these, they have a big Black Friday sale coming up on the 11th of November. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you guys and that is, the Southern Classic. So that is coming up in a few weeks time. It is the best race meeting in New Zealand. And if you've got a classic bike or a bucket, I wanna see you there. No excuses, so get it out of the garage and I'll see you in a few weeks. And on that note, this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed. Now, catch you next time. An intelligent monkey probably could do it.